This is Lemons Car Spotting. You post to Instagram with the hashtag Lemons Car Spotting. We pick the hooptiest. They are so incredibly terrible. And which one we want to become a real Lemons build. It does car-like things. We've been pushing for one of those in Lemons too, and those are very affordable. Okay, so you guys already know how this works. We're just going to go. You're Nick, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Stop. Ah, <laughs> the hooptiest. Finally. 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 <laughs> All right. I'm Lemons Build. Okay. Okay, let's get started. Let's do it. Oh, boy. <laughs> what do we have here? Uh, <laughs> I have no according- idea. Yeah, no, I don't either. According to the text, it's two Canadian market rear engine Skodas in a shipping container. Well, that's, that seems really appropriate. Looks really looks exactly like a Chevette with a cowl scoop on it, but what he also looks like the Canadian Steve McDaniel in that picture. So there's a lot going on here. Yeah. Oh boy. I God. I mean, I would have had no idea what these yeah. were. The yeah. dude, uh, Mike Slap Attack, hadn't explained it. No, but, no, uh, you know, I, I do get the occasional email. Of course, we have a rule that lemons race cars must have started out anyway as a street legal vehicle because we don't want tube frame cars, we don't want open wheel indie yeah. cars or whatever. One question I do get we periodically. Do. We do. We just can't. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. This is true. Uh, our lawyer has informed us that you cannot show up in Danny Sullivan's 1986 Lola. Yeah, sadly. So I do get the occasional question of, can I bring a street legal car from a non-USA market? And the answer is, uh, generally speaking, yes, if it's from a, ca- a country like Canada or Mexico. Once we get into Laos and right. Myanmar <laughs> right, right, and Djibouti, right. I think we'll, we'll, we'll take those case by case. Yeah, but we would totally take this car. This, Yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong with this? Yeah, car? right. Uh, you know, I've driven a few Skodas. Mm, they're they're pretty bad. <laughs> It's it's the VW of Romania, right? Yeah. Well, right, and that sort of says everything you need to know. So, yeah. you know, now on the opposite pole, what do we have here? Ancient Land Cruiser. Yeah, it looks like a LJ seventy oh, Land Cruiser uh, or seven seventy series anyway, which is the weird stubby one that they sold yeah. uh, in various markets, not ours. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's got a lot of Daihatsu Rocky in it, but I would say that's because the <laughs> Daihatsu Rocky has a lot of LG70 land. Yeah, yeah. I think Toyota, they had this vehicle and they said, uh, oh, are we going to sell this in, in the U.S.? No, it looks too stupid. And the Daihatsu was like, there's an opening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Pretty good. Like yeah. the color. Hoping yep. that's factory. Yep. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not like that thing. Uh, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh, I, don't even, I don't even know where to start. I mean, this was this was some guy. This was the very end of his dream of studly independence. He's like, ah, I got a got a town and country. I guess yeah. I'm done for. And this is what happened afterward. Oh, such a hard. Oh time. man. Well, I can, yeah, I can see the mung from here. Yeah. I mean, this one yeah. has been abandoned for some time, um, or, or as they say on Bring a Trailer, barn find condition, right? <laughs> All original, right? Um, exactly. Ah, boy, you know, my parents had the very first generation uh, Chrysler minivan, and um, I don't know that they got a whole lot better after well, that. They started out pretty good, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't get a whole lot better, and the rest of the world moved on. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. heavy as and things like that. I just yeah. I can't get over, I can't get over like the guy. He had a Mustang in high school, and he had a you know, <laughs> yeah. and he had like a yeah. third gen Camaro. He yeah, got married. It wound up at this, and now it's in his backyard. Covered yeah, will do. Yeah, with the yeah. Well, at least it's the town and country, and not just you know the Voyager. Uh, all right, I'm sad now. Uh, I need yeah, that one. That one's a bummer. Yeah, come on. This, uh, there, uh-oh. Oh, oh no! I don't know how to use the tool. There this we will go. Brighten our spirits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's really good. Yeah, this is from Bright Owner Nest. Bright One Our Nest. Yeah, I don't. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that this is a, a poster we've seen before, but this appears to be some kind of Chevy truck. Yeah. What is Brighton this? Ernest. Brighton Ernest. That's ah. Yeah. 
That uh, thing is spectacular. As I have <laughs> mentioned previously, I got a bunch of wealthy buddies in San Francisco now. They're all about these trucks. I mean, they're about the $40,000 restored version, but still, it's all they yeah. want. Boy, I mean, I do like an old, honest American truck, um, but um, not at 30 or 40 grand, I don't. I mean, well, this, you know. And this one is better in two ways. One, it hasn't been restored. And two, it's not a $40,000 truck. So, <laughs> yeah, right, right. This thing, I'm telling you, that's a that's a good looking vehicle right there. Honest wear. It's ready. Yep. Ready. It looks like it's got the uh, step side option. Can't really tell if it's a short bed or a long bed. Obviously, they had many different variations uh, of body style. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot to like. Well, you know, I would say, well, the problem is it drives like a truck. But so does every vehicle from this period. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, this is true. Uh, yeah, they haven't really lost anything. Yeah. Uh, what do we have here? Well, I still don't really know how to use the tool. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a Chevelle, um, maybe a '68 or so, '68, '69. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds and looks looks right. I mean, you know, it's just a car. What the hell? Pretty my cool. buddy had one of these yeah. in high. My buddy had one of these in high school, and uh, it was primer gray with primer black racing stripes, and uh, IROC Z <laughs> third gen uh, Camaro wheels. Uh, two-speed power glide 327 one time the, the the chevelle's greatest moment of glory was some dude in a camaro pulls up at a stoplight all right we're gonna race this fool <laughs> of course because yeah what else are you gonna do that's what you do and so my buddy he punches it and it had bad motor mounts bad trans mounts whatever it was Power glide, you know, the whole thing torques over this way, pops the power glide from drive into neutral. Engine goes to about 8,000 RPM. He panics, shoves it back into gear. It lights the rear tires up, and we take off. And, and we were thinking, like, oh, man, the Camaro guy must have thought, like, oh, man, those guys are professional drag racers. I didn't stand a chance against them. <laughs> I thought you were going to conclude that with, and then the engine fell out. Somehow that car just withstood a spectacular amount of abuse. I can't really explain that part of it. <laughs> well, all right. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Again, you know, rich guys in San Francisco will pay $40,000. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. I feel like a lot of those guys don't have experience with how bad those things really are in real life. It's like, you know, it's it, you get it for the look and then ah, it's just. I was just literally yesterday talking to my friend Eric Rindle, and he, he's a designer. He's a graphic designer and an ad agency guy. And yeah. he just talks about his old GTO. And he used to have a GTO. And he said, I had to get rid of it because people kept coming up to me and asking me things like, oh, is that a tri power? And he's like, I don't know. I'm a designer. I bought it because it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He also, he says, you know, my Toyota RAV4 is so much better than my GTO. It's like yeah. faster, handles better, has better brakes. Yeah. It's yeah. All true. Well, and the thing about GTOs, man, the, the one and only 60s GTO I drove happened to be at the same time when I had my 64 Comet, which, you know, at the time was a $3,500 beater. And the collector spec 389 tri-power GTO drove exactly the same. Pretty much the exact same car. Yeah. So, yeah. Almost yeah. indistinguishable yeah. behind it. Yeah. 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 All right. Moving on. Ooh. <laughs> what the... <laughs> Indeed. What in the world? So you know it's from that period of like the mid '80s because they had the modern square headlights. That's how they modernized these cars: square headlights. <laughs> yeah, but what are they? Is the larger question. I think there was this whole subset of Jeep back in the days when it was really Jeep, um, where they just made industrial vehicles for industrial stuff. I don't know what's going on here. It says. Mines of Pala, California. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means Anton, either. Anton's race transport race transporters in the background, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the full on bread truck. Yeah. Slash. Rum and, uh, yeah. Rum and bread yeah. truck. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there, but clearly I, I don't know that I've ever seen those, and I assume that it was some kind of weird South American thing. But the guy says it's California, so I don't know. In the comments, tell us what in the world is happening right here. I got, all right, we'll take one. We'll take one more look here. I mean, 
They're not male Jeep derived because they're a little bit too big. Yep. They're not old because they got rectangular headlights and it looks like plastic fascia over them. Yep. Why well, don't know. <laughs> you, you've uh, you've outlined everything I can tell from the photo. <laughs> Yep, but they have a folding flat windshield from about 1948. So, right. pretty fascinating. Yeah, no, pretty, pretty interesting. Well yeah, somebody in the comments will know. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Well, it's not we have to be careful out an Elante. Yeah, we have to be careful what we say. What with the Elante Jihad and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't know. This one looks pretty good. It's got no particular scabs. Uh, where is that? Virginia? Yeah. yeah. Pretty Virginia. impressive condition for Virginia. It's got the, I got uh, it's I got got the removable hard top. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to say, I would drive that car. I mean, Alan Galbraith be damned. I, I would totally rock that thing. Well, and we've said it before. Everybody who has driven the to date one and only Lemons Elante race car has yep. said that it's actually a great performing car, yep. with, even with the HT4100 motor and the automatic. Um, Everybody said that it handles well, decent enough power. Um, it's been dead nuts reliable, which is interesting. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, bear in mind, these are all lemons racers. So true. You know, standards probably a little different, but <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Not the standard of the world, but the standard of Altamont. The standard of Altamont. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is what just is this a just an accord coupe? It's a, well, yeah, it's an Accord Coupe, or as it was called at the time, a prelude. Um, <laughs> Is that really a prelude? Yeah, for that generation, uh, Eric and I reviewed one of these on a previous episode. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think, I mean, it was a, at the time, totally shared platform with the Accord. Um, it doesn't and, look uh, enough, though. It, that, that deck doesn't look long enough. I believe you, but... Well, just I think that. there might be a little bit of a uh, uh, optical illusion. What with the sweet aftermarket spoiler, a little foreshortening going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, the, you know, Eric and I, of course, pointed out that anybody who races lemons at Ginger Man uh, has PTSD when they see this car because it's the, the of the style raced by the car and driver team, <laughs> who has pissed everybody in Ginger Man off at one time or another. Yeah, that's true. Although, yeah, getting getting into a later Mercedes or uh, BMW that did not help. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, this is true. People are now looking wistfully on. Yeah, remember when those guys just drove a prelude? <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else we got. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Is it a Crosley? Oh, it might be a Crosley. I was going to say it's an Austin, but that's wrong. Yeah, I, I initially thought it was a Lloyd, but it's too big. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I don't know what this is, but I'll bet you that Nissan built it under license. After <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably true. And, you know, and it really calls into question, why do we have a show? Because we don't know what the hell we're doing. Looks like an Austin. but Yeah, you know, my initial thought was Lloyd, but it's too big. And then I thought Crosley, although is it also too big to be a Crosley? I don't know. Actually, actually I like Crosley, although... What's going on with the weird license plate? So that's also messed up. Is that foreign? Uh, well, it says CT on it. I think it's just a Connecticut license plate from, you know, 1938 or whatever this is. All right. All right. Well, this is from Garage Heroes in Training, and yeah. they probably don't know either because yeah. they don't say anything. But I like it. I think it, whatever horrible thing it is, you know that somewhere in India or Japan, somewhere some poor bastard was making this under license oh, for like yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. No, this is the, this is the this is the Hindustan Duke of Earl which was sold until 2009 for sure. <laughs> exactly right. All right. Well, I like that a lot. I don't think it can be my lemons build choice because the wheelbase looks like it's about 40 inches, but <laughs> that one's right up there. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Uh, okay. <laughs> You're not going to have a wheelbase problem here. <laughs> I think we all know where I'm going. This, I believe, was a Prey replica, right? Wasn't this Glenn Prey? Oh, God. You, you're, you're pushing my knowledge. I just, it uh, looks like a cord, 
um, sort of tribute in the yeah. grand Excalibur spectrum yeah. of sort of 1930s throwback retro cars that they made in the 80s and 90s for some reason. Man, this thing. So I have seen these completed in the flesh, and they look nothing like a Corvette. <laughs> yeah. They look like what I think they are, which is like a Nova or something. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous cord-esque fiberglass body on it. Um, this one, I'm assuming that the uh, gas tank, the <laughs> steering column, and the wheel and the seats, I'm assuming those will eventually go into the car. Oh. Well, I like, yeah, I like the fact that he's meticulously laid out all of the components for the restoration, right. including the four wire wheel hubcap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't, you know what? You're hundred percent right. I didn't realize those were four wire wheels. I thought yeah. that was one wire wheel, not four <laughs> wire hubcap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And of course he has the Tupperware with the, you know, right. meticulously packed uh, gauges and other trim bits. <laughs> it, oh man. It's, this really looks like it is getting ready for the Craigslist ad. I know what I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 90% complete, just yeah. needs final assembly. Right. <laughs> uh, $38,000. Well, all right. I I I don't want to I don't want to bury the lead here, but I'm pretty sure my problem is <laughs> Well, okay. Well, let me just say that, uh, boy, a lot of good things to choose from. I, w I was uh, tempted to go with the Jeep trucks just because I literally have never seen that before and yeah. don't know what they are. Um, yeah. So just yeah. for the mystery factor, that might have been the hoopiest. But I think at the end of the day, I have to give it to that Crosley or whatever it might possibly have been. That There's be something about, you know, being in the woods <laughs> and looking <laughs> like that that just screams hoopty. Yeah, no, I, I cannot argue with that. That thing, that's a thing of wonder right there. Yeah. And, you know, for me, uh, well, I don't think there's any question. It's it's this guy right here. Uh, you uh, know, and we've said man. this before, Class C, zero laps, it's a loophole. You yeah. know, you can spend whatever you want on a one of these 1930s, the modern classic retro throwback machines, Excalibur, um, any of those stuts. Uh, I'm, I, I know I'm leaving uh, the, the Zimmer, yeah. uh, any of those, bring those to lemons race. We're not going to switch you on the budget. We we'd love to see something like that. You, I mean, to be fair, I got, we got to see one of those things, but if somebody like got a little wide in turn two and brushed the arm co the body would just explode. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I was thinking in the back of my head, if you are serious about bringing something like that, definitely send us pictures of what, actually yeah. the structure is on one of those things because if it's a fiberglass hot tub with four <laughs> wheels and a fiberglass top eh, we might yeah. not allow it assuming it's a 89 thunderbird under there then i think it's got a better chance that's exactly right all right everybody thanks very much we'll see you yeah. next week see ya